Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Um, so this is, I'm Lisa. I don't know why I'm so nervous tonight. This is weird. I'm not usually nervous. Um, welcome everybody. It's been a long time since I've taught on anything like this. Um, since I've taught on empaths and narcissists. Um, so some of you guys might remember um, a while back, uh, and I say this sometimes now, that the purpose of this channel is for me to help all of you live a spirit-led, whole and healed, peaceful and prosperous life. Um, I don't tend, I don't tend to um, probably talk about that as much as I was um, before, and I probably should explain it for those that are newer to the channel, what I really mean by that. Um, so the purpose of this channel is not just for um, tarot reading. In fact, in actuality, that's probably the least bit of it. Um, that's the smallest really reason why we have the channel. Um, really, the channel was born out of my pain, right? It was born out of my coming through my narcissistic experience, you know, started looking for answers and trying to find new ways to get answers. And, and um, because of the uh, empathic intuitive gift, then I started reading tarot. So really the purpose of this channel really is to help you lead a spirit led or really a higher consciousness led, led by your spirit man, whole and healed, whole, right? So your aura being whole, you being whole, um, he, uh, in, uh, injury, um, abuse, you know, suffering from abuse or anything like that. All of that being made whole, peaceful and prosperous life, nothing missing, nothing broken. So that this way, the brokenness that we live through, right, um, is healed and made whole again, right? That we um, fill our aura and we're going to, I'm going to have a couple diagrams here momentarily that's going to, you know, even further um, delineate that. But um, so it was really born out of my pain from being an empath and having been in a very interesting and very serious narcissistic um, relationship. So I used to talk about this a lot. And uh, so we're going to talk about it tonight. We're going to start, this is going to be the first one in a, in a new series, right? About empaths and narcissists. Um, so what we're going to do tonight, just so we're clear, uh, is we are going to define what an empath is. We are going to define what a narcissist is um, because those words right now are being tossed around. Let me just let my braids down. Those words are being tossed around um, and it's rather, um, it's a friend of mine and I, actually Armand and I were speaking earlier today and it's rather in style now. I'm an empath. I'm an empath. I can feel everything. I feel so much energy everywhere. I'm an intuitive, right? So it's kind of in vogue right now. It's kind of in style to be an empath. Um, oh gosh, yes. Probably more so out in California because that's where I'm on is. Anyway, let's just talk, okay? So I have a couple of diagrams here. Bear with me one second. Let's talk about what an empath and a narcissist is, okay? All right, an empath. This is the clinical definition of an empath, okay? okay? Um, an empath being a noun, and of course, again, this is the Webster's definition. So chiefly in science fiction, which is fact, um, a person with, a par with the paranormal ability to apprehend the mental or emotional state of another individual. Okay. Um, a person with the paranormal ability to apprehend the mental or emotional state of another individual. So let's talk about that for a moment. Those of us who are empathic know very well, some of us can 
walk into a room. I'm going to have to probably turn the chat off. So uh, some of us can walk into a room and we feel everybody. Um, it's, we can walk into a room, we can feel everyone, right? For some people, that's rather crippling. For others of us, we've learned how to utilize it in its proper way, its proper context. So those of you watching the replay, depending upon if I've chopped this up or not, there's a couple of comments that were in there. One of which is that an individual refuses to be an empath. Um, I don't think that that's something that you have the ability to refuse or not. I suppose you can always refuse a spiritual gift if you wish. However, I think you'd be doing yourself a grave disservice by doing so. Because being empathic and being intuitive gives you an amazing ability to heal. Because I literally can feel what you're going through. I can sense it before anybody else sees it. Sometimes I can sense that there's something going on with a person before they can even fully diagnose what's going on themselves. They might not even really know what the heck is going on with them. And I'm like, what's happening? What's going on? What's, what's, did this happen? Did this happen? Did this happen? So it's using that em empathic ability along with the intuitive higher consciousness self that is very, it has actually a very powerful thing. I will tell you though the dirty, and I've said this before, those of you that have been with me for a while, bear with me. But I've said this before and I'll say it again to the cows come home. The problem with empaths is that our dirty little secret is we don't want to fix ourselves. It's not as cute as the other one, but you know what? It'll be all right. It'll do for now. Okay. Um, so being an empath is not necessarily the absolute worst thing in the world. As a matter of fact, I rather like it. But, um, hey, sorry. But the thing is that we have to understand that we need to fix ourselves and empaths tend to not want to fix ourselves. That's our dirty little secret. We would much rather fix everybody else. Everybody, everybody else rather than ourselves. That's how we get hooked in with the narcissist. Now, let's look at this again. Let's look at the, we looked at the definitions once. We're going to look at the definitions again. A narcissist, at its core, it is a person who has an excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. A person who has an excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, of course, you know, that's not just, so a narcissist, and I want to be very careful when we, that's another term that's tossed around way too liberally, way too easily. Labeling somebody a narcissist. There's a difference between having narcissistic tendencies, severe narcissistic tendencies, and having the personality disorder, the clinical personality disorder. Okay. There is a healthy amount of narcissism, narcissism most all of us should probably have. Um, most of us should probably have, it, you know, there's this amount of self-esteem, self-care, making sure that we're in and of ourselves, like, um, that we're take, putting ourselves first. Um, that's healthy. There's a little bit of unhealthiness where, you know, if you're really, if you're too self-absorbed and too self-focused, 
where you absolutely don't like you really some people are very self-focused and self-absorbed but when you call them out on it they come outside themselves again and they're just like oh okay yeah i get it you know they'll feel they'll feel bad about it a narcissist will not a true narcissist will not feel bad about it a true narcissist, you can say you're being self-absorbed, self-centered. That's the most selfish thing I've ever heard a human being say. Like, how can you not have any feelings for this other person? And their response is going to be, well, you don't know what they did to me. And you don't know how I've been victimized. Right? That's going to be someone with strong narcissistic tendencies. When I stay, say that someone is a true narcissist, I delineate between strong narcissistic tendencies and the personality disorder because the personality disorder or NPD is a finally being recognized in the psychological um, arena as a literal disorder. Before they were just like, it's really not. It is an actual recognized disorder now. It is along the lines of being a sociopath. It, 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 it's that serious. This isn't something that just should get tossed about. Someone with the personality disorder typically has suffered severe abuse as a child or teenager or has been raised by a narcissist and then suffered abuse, narcissistic personality abuse, right? So they've either usually suffered sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, all of the above, you know, something like that. They've had some severe trauma in their lives, typically. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying this is what happens. Narcissists are created. I do believe that on my website, heartofinspiration.net, I have more than a few previous teaching that I've done um, that's available for download um, where I think I have some video and things like that up there but narcissists are created empaths are born narcissists are created in the third dimensional realm empaths were born this way very different when someone um, typically has, well, typically when someone is, is, has NPD, there's um, different forms or different types of narcissists as well. There is somatic narcissists. There are somatic narcissists. Those are narcissists that are also sex addicts. Um, I don't know what the ones they call that are kind of more on the violent side, but there are some violent, more... Uh, of a violent nature narcissist that inflict physical abuse on um, their partners, um, if you will, because for a while you are truly their partner. Um, so there's different forms of narcissism, just like there's different levels of being an empath. However, with someone with the personality disorder, if they have developed this personality disorder after suffering abuse, it is because through the abuse, pe different people have different reactions to, especially sexual abuse, physical abuse. And the person enduring the physical or sexual abuse Oftentimes, and you'll hear this of um, sexually assaulted women, men, molest children um, that have been molested, things like that. They will often say, often not all, that they go to a different place. They disassociate themselves from their body so that they are not there and present during what's going on. Um. And so someone that develops into being a narcissist, then <laughs> um, not only do they disassociate themselves from the, the event as it's occurring, 
But um, again, most people that have suffered some form of abuse, you know, we try to figure out some way to please our abusers so that either it will not happen again or just because we're in fear of our life. So the, the person that develops into narcissism becomes an actual personality a disorder person, right? They develop a shell, an outside shell to protect themselves because the little boy or little girl inside they have deemed as being unlovable. And a lot of times they've been told over and over again, they are unlovable in the way that they should be loved and honored and respected um, if they are their true selves. So they develop this persona, you know, that they present to the outside world. And usually it's quite charming. It's quite charismatic. It's quite alluring. It's quite seductive. It's, it's, it's quite attractive, right? Um, because they want to present this gregarious person to the outside world, but they're devoid of the ability to actually love another human being. And they're devoid of the ability to love themselves. Therefore, they cannot love another being. Okay. So that's how the narcissist is created, right? Or what the narcissist does. So the narcissist really, I, um, you know, I wasn't the one to coin this phrase, but they're really an energy vampire, right? They go around sucking the light and love out of empaths and empaths like me, especially empathic intuitives, um, especially empathic intuitives, we are grade A narcissistic supply. In fact, sometimes I think that the lore of the vampire really came as a result of this whole narcissistic, what have you, right? So it really is that kind of an, an, a relationship. You see the vampire, right, would go and get their prey. And the ones that they adored, they didn't kill them. And they didn't even necessarily turn them. But they would feed on them because their blood was good. And then they would let them recover. And the victim that fell in love with the vampire would willingly do it. Come back in a few days, come back in a few weeks, feed on me again. They wouldn't turn them though, because if they turned them, they couldn't have that relationship with them. They were grade A supply. An empath is grade A a supply. Why? Because we are the healers and we are the ones that will say, Oh honey, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I know this person has hurt you. Let me heal you, you broken one. Let me, let me heal you, you broken bird. because that's what we want to do, right? That's what an empath does. You're a healer. The best healers are empaths. And this is why I say that, because we have an innate ability to triage. We have a wonderful, wonderful ability to read you and know exactly what's wrong with you, or at least guide you to the point where you can pinpoint it, right? But with the narcissist, it's actually grade A supply for us, honey. You know why? This is a never ending cycle of broken crap. This is the never ending cycle of Humpty Dumpty. We're always putting this person back together because the moment we think we get them back together, then they come up with some other way that they're completely broken. I'm broken again. Oh, let me fix you. Okay. And that's how they get us. They hook us in because they're broken. 
and they hook us in because we are not healed. So we are unhealed beings at that moment attempting to heal a very broken being that we think, but that being doesn't actually want to get healed. All that being does is want to suck all the light out of you. Now, let's look at something else. Usually, guys, for those of you that have been with me, you've seen this diagram before, only I do a horrific job of drawing it out on a chalkboard. So here it is as a JPEG. You guys, I know you're thrilled that I actually drew this out. So this is what I've done to the best of my ability right before I got on live. I was busy cleaning my garage earlier, guys. The person in the blue is the narcissist. The person with the blue star over them is the narcissist. They should be to your left on each side. <laughs> and um, the one on the other side is, I, is the empath. Now, I did not make them gender specific. They're gender fluid. <laughs> Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Now, if you notice what those star, that star, those stars, excuse me, represent, and then the circle and green on the other side, what the, those represent the people's auras. Okay. I wish I had a pointer I could use on here. They represent their auras. So if you notice the auras for the narcissist, both times it's not round. Your aura should look like that green, it should be more of a circle. Um, it should be circular in nature, right? When your aura is, is whole and we'll discuss an aura another time, but just for suffice it to say your self-esteem. All right, we'll put it there. Now, the blue auras are not really full, right? There's chinks in their armor, literal chinks. And if someone wanted to, they could literally grab a hold of the points of that star, couldn't they? Because it's not circular. It's very easy to hold on to. Now, the diagram on the left, it should be your left. You have the narcissist with the blue star over him or her because women can be narcissists as well. Trust me. And then the empath has a yellow star and I made it yellow because the empath in this case hasn't really healed themselves enough to come up and outside of their solar plexus chakra. They haven't healed enough to come upside outside of the solar plexus chakra. So their aura as well is a star. And if you look at that red line, that's toxic energy. Toxic energy can easily be transferred back and forth between the two. Why? Because neither one has a inflated aura, if you will. Also, if you look, do you see that point there? There's one point on that star, blue, one yellow that's crossed. Now I could have made it where the entirety of the whole thing um, was a cross section and, and, and became codependent and intermingled. When you have an empath that is an unhealed empath in relationship with a narcissist, what happens is you get codependency. You get codependency. Remember the dirty little secret of us empaths. We don't necessarily want to heal ourselves. We don't want to heal ourselves. We say we do, and we think we've gotten to a place that we need to get to. However, however, we really haven't. And because we really haven't, we become codependent 
we need that narcissist, guys, just as much as they need us. Because we have to feel like we are doing something significant by healing that other person. And all we want to do is make that other person happy. A lot of times as empaths, we've been the fixers and uh, the negotiators and the peacekeepers in our family structures as well. And in all of our friendships, our work relationships, everything. I want y'all to see me when I say that, right? That's who we've been. We've fixed it all, all the time. We've healed everything all the time. We've made it all work all the time. And certainly we can make this one work. Certainly we can handle this. Certainly. Because we're the healers, we're the fixers. And we've fixed ourselves up enough that we think we're pretty darn good. But this is something else I want to tell you about empaths and narcissists. This is a thus saith Lisa. This is not, you won't find this in any textbook or whatever. This is a thus saith Lisa. I firmly believe that before any adult empath, before any adult healer, truly gets to a point where they um, can pass through this rite of passage, right? Where they get to this other ascension level. I truly believe that a lot of us have to have our narcissistic experience. That we have to have our nurse. I mean, and we got to have, some of us got to have a real deep one. Like, I literally am certain that my ex-husband was assigned to me to destroy me. And I know that had I not had that experience, I wouldn't be where I am today. You wouldn't see this today. I wouldn't have grown to this point. I wouldn't have sought out to pluck up the very roots of childhood and past life um, injury, trauma, I would not have. I don't regret it. I would do it all over again. I saw that comment, Rio. It's more than teaching us boundaries. Way more, way deeper than teaching us boundaries. It is literally teaching us how to operate as a powerful being, as a powerful empath, it is enabling us that experience, if we take it the right way, enables us to go to such a depth of our own soul, go, allows us to go to such a depth of the dark night of our empathic soul that we dig up deep roots, deep seated issues that have long since needed to be dug up because guess what they wouldn't have even been identified had that narcissist not come into our lives just like we're an empath and we pick up on that pain that narcissist trust me baby picks up on yours the narcissist sees it the nar my narcissist knew exactly what buttons and they figure it out quick too they're good especially the older ones. They pick up. He knew exactly what to do, what buttons to push and what to say to keep me tied and tethered. And pretty soon when he would be angry and would like leave for days at a time, really to go off and see his girlfriends, but um, it would be my fault. Because if I didn't do this, then it was my fault. If I just wouldn't have done this, then he wouldn't have got angry. And then it was the, so it was, you know, first it starts with the love bombing, right? When they reel you in. And then um, pretty soon it's the guilt trip victimization. I'm such a victim. I'm such a victim. Da, 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 da. And you just, oh, so they love on you. They get you to love on them. And then the mind control starts. 
and then the trying and then the gaslighting starts trying to make you think that you're that you've lost it twisting your words and twisting your words to other people just enough so that you look freaking crazy but you don't want to make them further upset because everyone else has hurt them, right? They're such a victim. Um, and they've been cheated on so often typically, right? So, um, or abandoned. So you get rid of your friends. You don't talk to a lot of the family. There's a very few people that you speak with. You got to speak with them as a couple. Um, so all of that, and a lot of that is actually very true. They were victimized. There was probably abandonment. You know, there was definitely injury, but all of this happens. And pretty soon you're alone. You're in solitude. You're in solitude and you don't even realize you are. And pretty soon your friends are telling you that all the light has gone out of your eyes and your smile isn't quite as bright as it used to be. And you're just exhausted. And all you want to do is make that person happy. Because you love them. And then they tell you how you're worthless and how you're this and how you're that. But you've now become so dependent on their validation because you've gotten wrapped in it. You've become so dependent upon their validation that when they then invalidate you, you just take it. You just take it. Until one day, something happens to snap you out of it. Now, hopefully, for most of us, it's not as traumatic, right? It's not as traumatic as what happened with me, but, and I know I'm probably a fairly, um, a fairly, uh, not even as severe as others, right? But a pretty severe situation. Um, but something snaps us out of it once there, it's been enough. Right? I firmly believe that spirit, that creator, that God, that beloved says, okay, you've had enough. Okay, it's enough. We're done. And then you get snatched out of it. Right? Because you've become codependent. Now, let's look at this list again. This diagram, let's go back to the diagram again. So we're going to look at on the right hand side now. The right hand side, again, the blue star is the narcissist. Now look at the empath on the other side though. The empath now has kind of, looks like an O, a zero, right? Lucky, if this is a narcissist you're dealing with, he'll never be happy and you need to run. I'm just, I'm literally seeing part of it. I do see some of you guys' questions. I'm just not taking all of them. Lucky, if this man that you're talking about, that just you want him to be happy and you want to, and you, there is no us, sweetie. There is only him. There is no us, baby. None. Only him. Run. Be glad he blocked you. Be glad he blocked you. Hello, everyone. I'm so serious. Now, 
Let me continue. When we get to this point here on the right, you're welcome, Lucky. When we get to the side on the right, okay, we've got the narcissist in blue again, and then we have the aura around the empath green. And the reason why it's like a tube, right, or like an O, um, is because I look at a healed aura kind of like a ball. You can't really grab onto it because it's round, right? It's inflated. It's round. There's no codependency and commingling of the auras. So the pain and the hurt of the narc can't get over there. Why? Because there's like two shells. There's like a force field. There's an outer force field and then there's an inner force field. The outer force field rejects the toxic energy. Why? Because we're no longer accepting it. We're no longer accepting it. The empath that has a, a healed aura allows, chooses what energy she would like. Chooses what energy she would like or he would like to accept within and rejects any and all energy that they do not accept. We can then accept energy in so that we can triage it and spit it right back out. We don't internalize it any longer. We are no longer codependent. The key to getting past an empathic and empath narcissist union, because it truly is a codependent union. The key is one or both parties gets healed. Because this is the other dirty little secret, okay, guys? And I'm being completely transparent. It's not even just letting go. I'm becoming completely transparent here. What attracted us to the narcissist and what is the same thing that if we are unhealed attracts us to people that aren't truly good for us? There is something within us that is unhealed and it needs, and it's still looking for validation. It's still looking for the other part. That other person serves you in some way. That pain actually serves you. It fills a hole. Why? Because like attracts like. People hurt people hurt people. Yes, that's true. But as somebody, somebody attracted to each other. In all actuality, you both were attracted to one another because of the same pain. Think about that. In my case, my narcissist, my ex, is 18 years older than me. Don't bother me. I've dated 18 years younger. I dated 18 years older, whatever. That's about my swing. I won't go any further than 18 years. Um... But, so he was 18 years older than me. So, and already retired. Okay, I got married. He was 65. Was he 65 when we got married or 66? Anyway, long story less long. Um, and people, and I even said it, and my mom said it. Those of you that have been with me for a while, I've heard this before. But my mom even said, now he's white, okay. Um, my father, of course, was African-American. And he reminded me of my daddy. I know it as, you know, that wasn't me being incestuous, okay? But he reminded me of my daddy in a lot of ways. A lot like my daddy. A lot like my daddy, okay? So much so that my mother even said his energy was like my father's. So much so that my mother said, oh my gosh, he's just like your father. He doesn't necessarily favor him, doesn't necessarily look like him, like facial features. But man, he reminds me of, my, of your father. She says, baby, do you think you, you're sure you can handle this? Well, I thought I could handle it because I had a wonderful relationship with my dad. I didn't have the husband-wife relationship with my father. I had father-daughter relationship. So whatever... Cause my, and my father was a narcissist. 
Now, he came to a point where he was no longer a narcissist. He, he, he realized what he did and was very remorseful and really came to a great um, relationship with God. And it was beautiful by the time he passed. But um, I was and am daddy's girl. And I thought I dealt with my daddy issues. I did deal with daddy issues, but there was still some roots in there that needed to be dealt with. So I had dealt with daddy as a daughter. I hadn't dealt with daddy as a wife. You see, that was my mother's space. And another time in another space, we'll talk about that whole relationship, but we'll leave that for right now. At any rate, so I was like, of course, you know, I can handle dad. I can handle him. Baby. The only difference was that he, that Terry was never violent towards me. But in just about, and I don't know if my dad cheated on my mom. I have no idea. And I don't want to know. And I don't ask him when he comes to visit. Um, you know, in my dreams or, you know, just around. I never asked that question. Um, but. Are we doing readings? Um, but he was my dad, so he represented my father. So there was a lot of these unhealed injuries and unhealed hurts. The little girl still needed to be validated, right? But in a weird way, because the little girl now married her daddy. Okay. So it was serving me. That pain served me. And until I dealt with the pain, I couldn't get a healed aura. I was still codependent. This is how we attract the narcissist people, empaths. We attract them out of our pain. Hurt people hurt people, but guess what? Hurt people attract hurt people. So when I say to you, thank you, Candy. When I say to you, Please let the bed sheets get cold before you put somebody else next to you. I'm not saying that just to be funny. I'm saying that because in all honesty, honey, you got to heal up from whatever else was going on. You have to heal up from the hurt and the pain before you put somebody else in the bed next to you. Because every time you put somebody in the bed next to you, you are creating yet another soul tie. Every time you have sex with somebody, you are creating a soul tie. Every time. The two are becoming one. Every time. So I ain't gonna ask y'all how many soul ties some of y'all done created. Some of y'all got a whole big old bottle of twine running around here that's about this gigantic because of all the damn soul ties y'all created but we are gonna leave that alone for another day another time y'all got some of y'all got so many knots and everything child please baby oh okay tj i'm sorry okay y'all be untying knots for damn days weeks months anyway my point is is that we attract the pain because we're unhealed that's why the empath and the narcissist are come together because actually both of them are broken and then we stay because we get suckered in and it's good because baby the makeup sex is amazing and y'all can't lie about that don't want y'all don't tell that story don't lie to these children's okay y'all know what i'm talking about
I ain't the only one. So, okay, guys. This is how we come together. I will say this. I will say this. We have to be careful when we toss around the term narcissist. It's being tossed around too much. Some people have narcissistic tendencies. Some people have the actual personality disorder. And there's a YouTuber and I can give you the, her name um, that actually has a whole like 130 question or something like test that you can answer for yourself or answer for your partner or ex-partner to see if how far on the narcissistic scale they actually fall. And I think she's like a clinical psychologist or sociologist or something. Um, so if y'all are interested in that, you can ask me later. So you have to be careful. But I will say that if this is, if any of this relationship sounds, what I've talked about sounds remotely similar um, I will tell you a lot of physical abusers are narcissists, right? They only care about themselves. Um, we'll talk about the cycle another time. The love bombing, the gaslighting, the this, the that. Um, we'll talk about them. We'll talk about how to unravel ourselves. So that's... Um, that's that's what I wanted to cover tonight. I know there's been a lot of questions rolling through here. I've seen some people talk about, I need to find out what to heal. Um, we can talk about the healing. Um, I will tell you that, that the easiest way to figure out what to heal is to, is to sit with yourself and think about what they said to you or did did or whatever usually it's what they said that made you feel the worst that's usually a clue yeah some 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 narcissists are physically and mentally abusive some are mentally abusive and then just sexually just like sex addicts like, I felt like I was abused sexually, not because I was abused sexually, but because he's slinging his ding -a -lang all over God's creation. Raw dogging. You know, I was just lucky I didn't get anything. Oh, you're very welcome, Giggle Glimmer. So, uh, I am Virgo Sun. Can we talk about this Sagittarius a little bit? And I'll take a few questions tonight. Um, Ashley, we gonna have to Oh gosh, girl, we're going to have to postpone to tomorrow night because I got to get my butt up at five o'clock in the morning and get to Walmart. Yeah, sometimes you get the trifecta. You know, all three. Well, I got to get up. I was supposed to be going to Walmart, y'all, and get these. I got to go buy all the school supplies. I'll take pictures for the backpacks. So, honey, I got a lot of stuff to do. Um, okay, do we want to do we wanna ask some questions here? I saw some running around, but I couldn't catch all of them, guys. I wanted to, to really get this out and get this taught. Um, the love packs, yeah. Thank you, Raina. Yeah, guys, there's a, there's, man, there's a ton I really would love to say, but I'm, I'll probably say it on Patreon. It's a narcissist, but the guy I'm referring to was, okay. Um, oh, okay. Your mom is calling you from France? Oh. <laughs> I love that, Rio. Um, you're not sure if the Sagittarius is a narcissist. Um, he may have just have strong narcissistic. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, he may have strong narcissistic tendencies. He may have strong narcissistic tendencies. 
it, it, but, but I'm going to tell you something, even if someone has strong narcissistic tendencies, depending upon how long they've had them, I might not still want to deal with them anyway. You know, it's been going on too darn long. I don't want to deal with your crap. Just, I mean, why? You know? They're still very unhealed. I saw somebody um, say something about do nar two narcissists actually ever end up together? Um, it depends on the degree of the narcissism. I cannot say who this couple is, but I know a couple very, very well. And I believe that the wife is the narcissist. I always thought it was the husband. And the husband is a narcissist, just to as narcissistic tendencies. But I'm telling you, that wife, that woman is a narc. Through and through. And I would love to drop kick her into next week, but I can't. Controlling does not mean you're a narcissist. It can be a narcissistic tendency though. And it depends on if the person is so controlling that they literally don't care anything about anybody else's feelings. So that doesn't have to be, though, being a narcissist. That can just be as a result of severe injury, traumatic injury to oneself. I think two empaths do work, especially if um, they're both healed. Or at least on the path to healing. As long as they're on this path to healing, I think that it's, it's good. Like as a protective response. I don't know what you mean by that. Bear with me one second. I had to restart. Okay, here we go. So if I'm not waiting on that. Yeah, you work on yourself. That makes the most sense. Well, Vernell, it's not necessarily the same. So, I mean, I understand and that's totally fine um, that you feel that way, but it's not the same. And the reason why I'm very clear about what is what and, and being very careful about whether or not we call, we just label somebody a narcissist um, because that really does carry, there is an actual personality disorder. And because there's an actual mental illness, diagnosable mental illness, we need to be very careful before we just label people that. Now, if someone has severe narcissistic tendencies and really is not showing any desire to grow or change or get better, then definitely don't be bothered with that person. Um, but it's not always the worst thing in the world. People that need to have control or OCD type tendencies in a relationship as a protective response. Yes, you'll find that, but that's not narcissism. You'll find that. Um, that's unhealed trauma. Well, I don't think that that's narcissistic. Raina, I don't think that that's narcissistic. 
I think that's unhealed trauma. I think that the need to know everything that you're doing, that the other person is doing so that you can maintain control, um, probably because I know you a little bit better. I don't find you narcissistic. I just think that there's, um, that probably, if I can be honest, is a little bit more to do with the self-esteem than it, than with self-esteem than it does with narcissism. Yeah, that's how, that's what I think about it. That someone that, but with tendencies is electric fence. I've never heard about, of electric fence personality. I just call them not on my list. Now, this is the good thing, guys. I want to leave, you know, I, I'd leave people with a positive note. A positive side to all of this okay um the positive side of the, oh wait do narcissists love themselves no they do not love themselves that's the sad part narcissists do not love themselves deep down in fact they hate themselves typically because remember, they always feel unlovable. There was, I, I, I'll say this and then I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, there was a moment before my ex and I broke up for good where he was sitting on the couch and we were talking about when that we were going to stay together. And I could see, I could finally see real pain in his eyes. And anybody who's dealt with a narcissist knows what I'm talking about. I could see real pain. It, the eyes hadn't glassed over. And for a moment, I looked into his eyes through, through the window to his soul and I could feel and see the little boy. The little boy with dirty clothes, unkept hair, you could tell hadn't been cared for. The little boy on his bed with the covers pulled over him, hoping that his abuser wouldn't come in to his room that night. I saw him. And I put my hand on his chest. And I put my other hand on his back. And I was praying. I was more like sending energy. Well, at that point, I didn't know about sending energy. All I knew was prayer. I was praying in tongues for him, for that little boy. Because I knew if I could reach that little boy and help him to feel safe enough to come out, that there was an opportunity for him to get true healing and tears started coming down my ex's face because my heart had reached his my spirit had reached what was left of his true self And then just as the tears started coming down, the barrier went right back up. I'm sorry, Raina. I'm 
I'm sorry. But just as I got through, he, he put the guard back up. I couldn't get back through again. Narcissists, especially when they get older, true narcissists, they have lived their lives protecting who they really are because who they really are they don't think is lovable. And they've done it for so long that they can't get, they can't, they just can't release it. They can't release it. Good night, Raina. And um, so narcissists don't love themselves. They don't feel that they're deserved to be loved. They don't feel like they ever deserve it. They don't feel like their true selves can ever be loved. Therefore, they don't know how to love. They have no capacity to, not even themselves. It is actually a very tormented life to lead as a narcissist. It is tormented. And I feel badly for them, actually. However, I cannot allow them to hurt me. So once you've become... Um, once you have a healed aura, you have aura defense, right? And it's not really even defense, is that you've healed the wounds and you've inflated your aura. You've healed it all out enough so that the toxic energy doesn't get to come in and no one gets to glom onto you. No one gets to attach themselves to you and there's no codependence. Right? That's the key. No codependence. Because I'm coming at this as a healed individual. So you have nothing, even if you can sense I used to be hurt at some point before, you have nothing to actually um, attach to or attract to. And in fact, now, when people have narcissistic tendencies or they're narcissists, they run for me. Like they might think that they want to be with me because why? Because I'm grade A supply, right? They're like, ooh, food, um, wonderful narcissistic snack. But then they find it real quick that I'm just like, no, are you ready to heal? Cause I'm here for that, but I'm not here for you to prey on anymore. So it's a difference. Yeah, that's the thing is all you want to do is show them love, but you have to re recognize why. Like, I want to show them love, but not at the expense of me. So what is it within you that keeps bringing them in? Why do you keep, like, attracting them? Why are you like this beacon? Because there's something within you that still needs to be healed. A slippery aura? Yeah, one that refuses attachment. Yes, or codependency. So I am very much uh, connected orically with a gentleman. We're connected very much so spiritually, um, but we're not codependent. I know what he's, I can sense when and, 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 and this particular person, we're not even romantic. But I know when there's a disturbance in the force, our auras are attached. However, I don't internalize any longer toxic energy. That's how come I can do what I do here all the time. I do not internalize toxic energy. I don't. Well, Sassy Rare Breed, 
be glad that you haven't. Some of us had to have them. Yeah. Yeah. Virgo son, this is what I would start doing is I would just start analyzing what were the things that were said or whatever that were the most hurtful and what are the things that most attracted you to the other person? Because those two are usually really good guides as to what it is needs to be healed. Okay, guys. I need to get going. I'm tired. I gotta get up and go get school supplies. And, um, I gotta meditate with y'all in the morning. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. We'll do this. We'll we'll keep talking about empaths and narcissists. If you all want to still talk hear about them, I'll we we can we can do a Sunday night series on them. It's not a problem. Thank God it's a holiday weekend next weekend here in the U.S. All right, love. Thanks, guys, for coming. I appreciate you. Namaste. Bye bye.